Uh, hello friends in this video i will talk about the semiconductor detector technology for high energy physics experiments so there are several technologies one is hybrid pixel detector this is extensively used by many experiment and uh, then uh, currently there are several technologies under development like map, map sensor this is this is basically monolithic active pixel sensors and then there is also technology which is called L gate technology this is called low gain avalanche detectors and then there is also technology is called 3D sensors so before going to the uh, this technology I want to mention about it but uh, when you uh, listen about uh, pad detectors and pixel detectors so when we say the pad detector basically which is basically of the size of mm by mm and then typically when we say the pixels we have uh, a smaller size like uh, typically of micrometer by micrometer so we have uh, in high energy physics uh, pad detector as well as pixel detector both are useful for the experiments so according to the requirement so then the hybrid pixel detector so we have a uh, basically pn junction here so you can see that uh, this is a bulk and then we have a doping here and on the bottom we also have a doping here so when a charged particle passes through it uh, we have a depletion region here that the electric field uh, the electron hole ps is created in the uh, uh, localized electric field uh, created by the atoms and this electric field uh, due to the this electric field the electrons and holes tipped uh, towards the electrode and then that that creates the uh, induced current on the electrode and this current is amplified by the amplifier and then it is sent for the pre processing uh, into the front end uh, chip uh, in the case of hybrid pixel sensors we have a this is the sensor part and uh, this consists of pixel detector and then uh, we have a uh, this front end uh, chip part and these are two are connected by a bump bonding so so we have a uh, one pixels and then we have a chip and they are connected by bump bonding so we make it uh, uh, like hybrid thing so that's why we call it hybrid pixel detector so we it's basically hybrid we have a separate sensor and we have a separate chip and then we just uh, uh, join them by using bump bonding so that's why its name is used for hybrid pixel detector okay so we have a depletion region I already mentioned here and then we have a bump bonding and typically electronic chips and if we go to the realistic detectors we have a bulk volume here and then we have multiple pixels on the top of that uh, which is created by photolithography and then we have a just amplifier to get uh, the signal out of the pixels due to the uh, created by the uh, incident particle uh, so what with the different what is the uh, inside the pixel detector so if we are using the silicon as a silicon pixel detector so we need to create a pn junction first uh, because it it increases the resistivity of the sensor which basically reduces the leakage current this is the current without any radiation so we want uh, leakage current as small as possible and this uh, that's why we do the we create the pn junction so what is the, our requirement in the experiment uh, we want large signal to noise ratio uh, which is as usual every everywhere we want large signal to noise ratio in the experiment and uh, uh, we want false pulse timing so that we have a fast signals and fast uh, uh, event information uh, and then uh, we want uh, low leakage current and then we want radiation hard detectors and then we want low multiple scattering in the ex ex in the experiment uh, last couple of years uh, i just i was just following the silicon sensors so the people are doing some several r and d to make it radiation hard so they mix uh, with oxygen atoms they find uh, several techniques to make it radiation hard and uh, this technology is used in almost uh, as i mentioned before in all the experiments like alice cms atlas and star uh, all experiment uses this technology so this is called hybrid pixel detector uh, now if i consider as a diamond so we know that the diamond is very highly resistive material 
uh, we have a resistivity of around 10 to the power 12 ohm into meter so we don't need to create any pn junction and the because typically leakage current uh, if you just uh, measure the leakage current it uh, it comes about of the other of pico ampere so you don't have to create, you don't need to create any pn junction because uh, we have already low leakage current and the uh, diamond pixel detector if you just want to consider the diamond pad detector uh, which is just basically is uh, some mm by mm diamond uh, and then you just create a, on the top and bottom you have to just create uh, the metal contact uh, by using the evap uh, thermal evaporation uh, techniques and uh, that can work as a detector like uh, then you can just uh, put the electronics here and that will work as a detector material so when a charged particle passes through it uh, you have a electric field created by the voltage uh, apply voltage and then you just uh, you can collect a signal for the charged particle uh, in the case of pixels again you have to just uh, create the you have to take the diamond and you have to mm, put the contacts and uh, is for the pixels you have to put the multiple contact on the top and then that can work as a pixel detector uh, so you you don't have to create any pair doping here so that's uh, the easiest uh, thing in the diamond now we'll come to the map sensor this is called monolithic active pixel sensor as the name suggests it is monolithic it's not hybrid hybrid we have uh, a sensor and then we have electronics we merge them by using pump bonding uh, in the case of monolithic pixel sensors uh, the example of it uh, this types of sensor is cmos uh, uh, we have complementary metal oxide semiconductor this is term for cmos uh, we have typically well structures p well and well structures and the, the in this case of CMOS pixel detector uh, we have a detector part and front end electronic part both lies on the uh, on the on the same 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 sensor so we have sense on the same uh, on the same sensors we have uh, the sensor part as well as electronics part is integrated on the same uh, same part so uh, currently this is being used by at least in the next upgrade and the other experiment are also trying to use it but the problem in this you can just see that uh, the depletion region is of the well shaped so when your particle passes through is here you don't have any depletion region here so first they dipped uh, first they diffuse and uh, uh, then they dip they passes through the depletion region and then they then they dipped inside the depletion region and created the signal on the this uh, on this diode uh, so this is currently being used uh, by the Alice uh, together with uh, since we have a well shaped depletion region so we are losing some of the charge here uh, because some of the charge might not be going in the depletion region uh, so that uh, is reduces the charge collection efficiency uh, and also first it diffuses so it takes time to diffuse uh, so so it's a bit slow so in the next step uh, people are also working on the other types of sensors like uh, in which we this is the first uh, this is the same copy of it and then you can see they are trying to replicate uh, the full depletion region so if we have full depletion region then we don't have to the concept of uh, diffusion first you have uh, the once part uh, electron hole pairs are created they can directly drift to the electrode so the, the collection of the charge will be fast and your your, uh, your ch uh, charge collection efficiency will be improved so we have different uh, uh, different uh, uh, types of configuration which is under development this is the, uh, this is uh, the ongoing project and the people are working on it uh, to get then the next also technology is called stitching technology what is in this technology uh, you can make uh, large area sensors so right now what we have uh, we have the uh, ITS in the form of steps we have some steps uh, that that is uh, uh, used to construct a barrel layer so these steps consist of uh, some uh, centimeter by centimeter square centimeter by centimeter uh, area sensors so we have some sensors in that uh, in that area but in this technology you can fabricate the sensors over a very large area 
so you can uh, you can make the sensors up to some meter some some meter one meter by one meter square and more larger areas so so you can make the whole uh, layer of sensors and you can also because the thickness uh, is reduced so you can also fold so you can just uh, make the curved whole sen curved uh, barrel layers of uh, sensors uh, so you don't uh, right in, in this case we have to put the many steps of uh, many layers to uh, make it uh, uh, it in the form of barrel layers uh, in the form of cylinders so so that's uh, that this is also in development so this technology will be considered in the next upgrade in the elite uh, stitching technology and i expect uh, if uh, this is also improved uh, like uh, if we get a full depletion region by next upgrade so people will also also consider the full depletion one because then then you have a gain in terms of charge and in terms of timing so that will be the best we have a folded sensor and then we have a uh, advantage of charge and advantage of timing then the another technology is called uh, LG sensor it's called low gain avalanche detectors the idea is that uh, uh, if you consider the 300 micrometer thickness uh, of pixel sensors and we have multiple pixels on the top so you can just uh, when the charge particle passes through it you can just see the blue is the electrons and uh, the red is the holes so if you just if your particle passes through it for the 300 micrometer thickness uh, you can just see that the pulse timing is typically is uh, 6 microsecond 6 uh, nanosecond and uh, if you just uh, reduce the thickness like 200 300 to 200 then your you can just see the timing is also reduced if you just further reduce the thickness your timing is reduced so so what we got uh, this uh, this is done in the k detector same framework so so what we learn if we reduce the thickness uh, our timing pulse timing is reduced so basically our sensor become fast uh, what what is the problem here so if you reduce the thickness uh, it also reduces the signal because your thickness is reduced so so that that uh, so LGAD uh, LGAD is uh, uh, it it can increase the signal uh, by creating the internal gain this is the uh, main logic inside the LGAD detector so typically LGAD uh, traditional silicon detector looks like we have a P type and then we have a uh, N, N plus dopings uh, and then we have a depletion region here and then we have a back on the back uh, we have a P, highly doped P layer and then we have electronics here and in the case of this we have extra layers of uh, uh, P plus before the collection that create that is used to create a gain so in the case of LGAD we have typically gain of uh, 10 to 20 so when a your charge is collected it is basically multiplied by typically 10 to 20 in this region so you have a your signal is multiplied uh, so you can get a larger signal at the small thickness uh, and the, since your thickness is small you have less multiple scattering so your detector uh, will provide a good momentum special uh, momentum resolution and the uh, uh, you have large signal to noise ratio at a small thickness and also you have a fast pulse timing because thickness is small your timing will be fast and it is called a 4d sensor because in the in the in the usual experiment we have xyz coordinate uh, because we have a fast timing it can also provide it, it it can also give the timing information so that's why it's called 4d sensors uh, it depends on the resolution of the detector so typically we have a 100 picosecond time resolution people are working to reduce this further so then we have a more precise timing information so so the good point is that uh, uh, when we have a uh, multiple collision events uh, that lies close in time you can separate them if you have timing information so you can separate uh, the event overlapping in time and the uh, next is uh, to for the track reconstruction we normally do we have multiple hits we do the pattern recognition so pattern recognition we use multiple uh, complicated algorithm so if we have for each hit point x y z t uh, and timing information 
so then you can use time compatible hits to for the pattern recognition so it will easy it will it will make uh, pattern recognition very easy and also if you have the similar topology for the jets you can reject at the level of trigger so the so typically size of this uh, algas sensor is currently is mm by mm uh, this is millimeter by millimeter but however in the case of cmos uh, we have typical size of uh, 30 micrometer by 30 micrometer and thickness is around uh, 50 micrometer so then the new concept is uh, called 3d sensors uh, we know in the usual planar detector we have a uh, bulk of silicon and then we have a top on the top we have a n plus uh, a p plus and then we have a extra large doping layer on the bottom uh, to improve the ohmic contact so when a charged particle passes then the electron and holes will dipped in the either on the top or on the bottom so you can see the drifting of electron and hole pairs but what if in the case of 3d sensors we have a vertical electrodes in the volume uh, around the thickness so now we have a vertical electrodes in the thickness so you have p plus n plus uh, in the hole of the bulk thickness so what will happen when a MIP will pass through it uh, electron of uh, and hole pairs will initiate here you can see it's traversing up and down but it will traverse le towards P plus and N plus and these electrodes are very close so you can see that uh, here if it, if it takes the uh, some time to L uh, some time to uh, traverse the distance L since L is very large but here this distance is very small so you can see uh, it will be faster than this and you have full collection of charge because you have same thickness but your timing will be reduced because these are very close in terms of uh, um, electrodes so this is the it also in development is called 3d silicon sensors where we have vertical electrodes in the thickness and the similar technology is also development in the diamond uh, in the case of diamond you don't have to do any doping as I told before uh, so then what you have to do you have a diamond uh, if you just uh, sign a, a very high power laser and at a high temperature diamond is converted into the graphite so you just uh, sign the laser there and that is kind of that will convert diamond into the graphite and the graphite is conducting that will work as an electrode so in the case of diamond you have to just sign the laser and that will convert that area into the graphite and then that, that graphite is automatically conducting so you, you don't have to create any uh, like ohmic contact there so that graphite will work as a conducting uh, electrode so in the case of diamond it is also in development uh, people are working to optimize it so so this is all